The Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan. And Fred McMurray as George. Together in the gay new exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show, with Irene Dunn as Susan Armstrong and Fred McMurray as George Harvey, editor and ace reporter, respectively, of the Hillsdale Morning Star. Well, as usual, things are happening around the editorial offices, and as usual, they concern Susan and George. Susan, I want you to listen to this. Throw it in the basket, George. I'll check it for spelling after lunch. Agreement. Between Susan Armstrong, here and after referred to as the party of the first part, and George Harvey, here and after referred to as the party of the second part. Whereas the newspaper institution known as the Hillsdale Morning Star... Stop right there, George Harvey. Here and after referred to as the party of the second part... If this is another scheme on your part to become a partner in this newspaper, the party of the first part says no. 50% of the stock and an equal voice in the business. That's all I want. Now, just sign here. No, George. You're going to have to refer to This is my newspaper. My father left it to me because he believed in me, and I'll make a success of it if it kills me. You've been looking rather peaked lately, Susan. Everybody else says I look better than I ever did. No deal? No deal. I quit. Go to lunch. I resign. Have a nice sedative with your dessert. I'm on a diet. Hey, boss, there's a guy out here claims he's coming up. I don't claim, I am. Well, anyway, here he is, folks. Give him a big hand. Beat it, kid, before you get the back of my hand. Hit the grit. I'm looking for the editor of this rural rag. I am the editor of the Hillsdale Morning Star. And Hillsdale, population over 80,000 is the county seat. I happen to be Shock Powers, next middleweight champion of the world. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Powers, but we don't print rumors. Last week, your paper said I had a cream puff left. Well, you don't look like a man down to his last cream puff. You don't look like a man, period. What? Well, get a load of this. Look out. George. Throw it right at me, Willie. George. Oh, George. Oh, why did you hit him? Chunk a beef like that, it's a challenge. Well, just don't stand there. Get some water from the cooler. I don't slug people unless I'm in the ring. But he's going to hit me. You saw. Self-defense. George. George. Say something. Mm. Give me that water. He'll be himself in a minute if that's something to look forward to. Give me that cup. You don't like this sports editor. He isn't a sports editor. Somebody else wrote that story about you. George. George, can you swallow this water? Uh, Maybe we ought to cut it with something. Oh, you think you're so terrific. I just hope that champion knocks you out next week. You want to bet? No. Oh, he's opening his eyes. Proves he's got muscles in his eyelids, anyhow. George, Mm. are you all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. I can get up now. You want to keep your shoulder up, your chin down, and your opinions to yourself, you swivel chair athlete. Next champion, huh? Comes Thursday. Sucker puncher, huh? In your case, yeah. Okay. George! Boy, that baby jab with his chin. Morning, ma'am. Something I can do. Whoa, whoa. I'm looking for Shark Powers. Is he in there? What if he is? He's aging. He must be at least 25 if he's a day. Now take me. Young, ambitious. I'm looking for him. Oh, allow me. Shark, honey, I've been waiting for... Oh, no. Shark. Hi, hon. Shark, what happened? Please, drink this water, George. He threw his fist at me. Oh, Shark. May I help, please? Thanks. I don't think I need any help. Mm. Oh, he's coming, too. Hit him again, Georgie boy. Knock him shivering. He's right on asking for it. I really think you'd better take Shark out of here. Well, you take Shark out of here. He's your boy. I want to go with you. Well, I don't want to go with you. I can make it worth your while, sister. I'm not your sister, and there's nothing you could say that could be of the slightest interest to me. You're a newspaper woman, aren't you? A story's a story, isn't it? Well, uh, I've got to stay with George. Oh, please, let me take care of George. Well, I don't think I... No, I owe it to you. All right. Come along, shock. This better be a story we can use on the front page. No, no. Susan. I'm not Susan. Oh, it smells so sweet. Oh, well, thank you, but I'm still... I have half the stock and a voice in the... A voice of... Susan, 
What have you done to your hair? I'm not, Susan. Then uh, what have you done to you? I'm Priscilla Henry, Shot Powers girl. Oh. Oh, and uh, when we traded punches, did we trade girls, too? <laughs> You're wonderful. Uh, thanks. Uh, where's Susan? Oh, she stepped out with Chuck. Stepped out? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to give her a story, probably. Oh. Uh, what do you mean, probably? Well, uh, you never know about Chuck. He's quite a fellow. And I see his canary convertible isn't out in front anymore. A canary convertible? And many's the canary it's converted. Oh. oh, it has, has it? Well, leave shock powers to me. I'll murder that bum. And then it started to rain. Pick up the fancy car. You couldn't raise the top. No reason for you raising yours, Miss Susan. Here. Get this warm dressing gown on you. There you are. Impudence of that power is keeping me away from work all day long. All work and no whirl makes Sue a dull girl. It was not a whirl, Patience. I just went out with him because he promised me a story. Huh. Never was a whirl. Didn't even get the story. Whirl. Whirl. Ah. Oh, uh. It goes round and round, and if it goes enough round, somebody gets KO'd. Uh-huh. Oh, this shock powers isn't bad. Oh, I'll answer the door. Are you expecting company? No, not at this hour. Good evening, patients. Oh, it's you. Will you announce me to Miss Armstrong, please? Miss Susan, it's Georgie boy! Come in, George, come in! Susan, where have you been? I've been looking for you all day. I was I was even going to call the police. Oh, now, George, you know I've been very good lately about staying out of jail. Uh, well, what about that yellow jaundice convertible? Well, what about it? I hope you had a jolly time. I thought we were just going to wait in Shock's car until... What's her name? Priscilla came down. But instead of that, he, he drove away with me. Hey, excuse me, Miss Susan. Oh, sure, but... sure. He drove away with you. Sure. Well, now, see here, George. Uh, Miss Susan, please. I, I want... Patience, patience. I said you were excused. Yes, but what do you want me to do with these muddy shoes you wore home? Uh, I'll take care of them later. Thank you, patient. You're ever so much obliged, I'm sure. Muddy shoes? Muddy shoes? Oh, muddy stop, shoes? Stop, stop, stop. From you, it sounds like baby talk. Muddy shoes, muddy shoes, muddy shoes. A nice long walk in the rain is good for a girl's soul. Yeah. Yeah, sounds awful good to me. It brought a lot of color into your cheeks. You know that, Susan? I'm just angry, that's all. Angry? No, at me? Well, not at me. Well, a little, yes. I'm sorry, Susan. You, you know how it is. I I think so, George. My jalopy, his big, powerful $6,000 convertible. Oh, it's transportation. Yeah. That uh, dress you're wearing, it's, uh, it's transportation, too. This? Yeah, it sure sends me. I've uh, I've never seen it before, have I? Oh, it, it's a house coat. Oh, I, uh, I, I didn't notice it. You see, my dress was drenched. Well, I... That's rain for you, isn't it? <laughs> My hair. Just look at it. I am looking at it. Susan, did you ever look at a person you've known a long time and, and begin to see a stranger there? Things about the eyes and the mouth and, well, things you never saw before. There's a stranger there. It gives you a queer feeling. I don't know. I, I, I don't think I've ever done that. No. Why? Well, I, I look at you that way sometimes. Like now, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, like now. And, and when you don't think I'm looking at you in the office. And what do you see? You. Oh, no stranger. Yeah. You're always you somehow. That may be because you know me better than we both think. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Oh, I got it! I got it! Well, somebody better get it before it drops in there for a double. Hello. Miss Armstrong, this is Clifford. Clifford? Do I know a Clifford? Better known to the train as Shock Powers. Oh, I'm glad you're better known to some people. Look, uh, I'm feeling pretty ashamed of myself after what happened today. I should think you would be. I'd like a chance to apologize and to, well, tell you something. You know, something important. Yes, yeah, so you say, Mr. Powers. Powers? It's on the level, Susan. You may call me Miss Armstrong. Is that Palooka first naming you? Oh, hush, George. Is that cornball reporter bothering you? Give me that telephone. George, stop it. Susan? Miss Armstrong? Oh, is that you, Punchy? Shut up, Stanley. Go find Dr. Livingston. He's lost someplace in Africa. You get lost likewise. You listen to me, Rosin Pants. 
The pen is mightier than the sword, and the press is mightier than the left hook. I'll bear it in mind. Now, let me talk to your employer, office boy. George, George, give me that telephone. I'll take it. It's infested with prize fighters anyhow. Hello? Shark? Who are we? The story, remember? How about lunch? Tomorrow at one. Well, all right. I'll meet you in front of the office. Check. Bye, girl. Goodbye. You made a date with that assassin. He wants to tell me something. And I'm newspaper woman enough to smell a story. That isn't story. That's gymnasium number five. To me, Clifford is merely a curiosity. Oh, Clifford? Mr. Howard, the next middleweight champion of the world, he thinks. <laughs> On the level, Sammy, that's the cauliflower's name. You ought to be able to murderize anybody by the name of Clifford. You know, Sammy, you've got a certain psychological point there. Plenty of sleep, fresh air, exercise. You could kill him. Sure. Former star fullback like me. Sammy, just feel these thigh muscles. Granite. Feel these biceps. Ow, not so hard. Well, a little training and sparring and, and you'd be in the paint. Yeah. Sammy, do me a favor. Telephone Ed Chalmers at the Businessmen's Athletic Association and tell him to call me back after five. He said after five. Uh, use the phone in the other office, Sammy. I'll take this. See in the golden gloves. Morning, Star. George Harvey talking. George, this is Priscilla. Who? Oh, uh, Shock Powers girl. How are you, Shock Powers girl? Well, alone in a strange town. Shock isn't having lunch with me for some reason. I sort of hoped you'd fill in on this short notice. Oh, well, well, no, Priscilla, I, I, uh, I've got to work. I'm sorry. Oh, you, you've got a date with Susan, I suppose. No, I do not have a date with Susan. Shocks to... What? Uh, I... Sure, sure, I'll have lunch with you. Oh, wonderful. Pick me up at the training camp? Right. Ten minutes? Right. Wonderful. Bye. Right. And a left. And a right. And a left. And a right. <laughs> You know, Shock. May I call you Shock? Shock is what I'm currently being called. Uh, currently, get it? Oh, oh, you're so witty. I spring it once an hour on the average. You know, you don't impress me as being a prize fighter at all. Uh, uh, that's a compliment. Well, uh, I'm not just a fighter. I'm a businessman. Fighting's a business, and I run it like a business. Making people hate me is part of my business. Well, you seem to be doing very well. Good enough. Editors pan me. Oh, I love it. A pick fight to them, in fact. What happens? Powers. I am knockout. Right. The fans jam the arena when I fight, hollering for my blood. Doubles the box office. Happens my cut, see? Is, is that what you wanted to tell me? Yeah, but uh, I wouldn't tell anybody but you. Oh. I've never known anybody quite like you, Jacques. I've never known anybody quite like you. Jacques. I want to do something that I've never done before in my life. Yeah? It concerns you. Well, go on, honey. I... I... Shock, I want to bet money on your fight. Oh. I believe so much in you, and it's for such a good cause. You see, if I win, I want to buy the children's hospital an iron lung. You are going to win, aren't you? The odds are two to one against me, but... But what's odds? Honey, you put every nickel you can scrape together on me because I'm going to win that fight for you. You'll be champion. The king. For me. two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, and the second act of our story. The two main wheels of the Hillsdale Morning Star, Irene and Fred, uh, I mean Susan Armstrong and George Harvey, are grinding out their day's copy. <laughs> George is grinding rather slowly. Oh, 
I don't have to stand for this. I'd rather hire a wagon and sell watermelons. Why yet, George? I'm trying to check this copy. These typewriters, why am I issued a lobster trap to work on? There's nothing at all wrong with that typewriter, George. You're just in a temper, that's what it is. I have the evenest disposition in this office, and you know it. You've had a mad on ever since you came in this morning. Yeah, ever since you came in this morning late. Well, I... I missed the bus. Your bus? What happened to your car? Well, I... I, I haven't any car. Well, what happened to it? Well, I... Sold it. You you sold it? Economic stabilization. Oh. And another thing. Where was my paycheck this morning? And where was everybody else's paycheck this morning? This is the day we're supposed to get paid, you'll isn't it? You'll get paid. You'll get paid. Yeah, well, what about my lunch? How am I going to borrow money from Sammy if he doesn't get paid? I noticed you're eating well. And what brought that on, George Harvey? The way you've been carrying on with the shock powers. Carrying on? Yeah. Those are fighting words, Junior. Lunch, dinner, supper, dancing, movies. Come late to work, knock off early. You look awful. What about you and that blonde Venus you've been dating? Priscilla? Priscilla. <laughs> You're never at home anymore when I phone. Well, I could be at the club playing some handball or skipping some rope, couldn't I? Oh, skipping some rope. How sweet. You're not jealous of a little black rubber handball, are you? Jealous. <laughs> oh, dear. Excuse me. I'm late for lunch. Okay, okay, all right, that'll do. Turn off on the punching bag. Now a little shadow boxing and a half-mile jog around the track. You can hit the showers for the day. How's it going, boy? Great, Ed. Be like a million bucks, tax-free. Oh, you're in shape, George. I never felt this good even in college. Uh, you'd have been a good, rugged heavyweight fighter if you'd have started on time. <laughs> you really think so? <laughs> I know it. Uh, say, uh, how you betting on the fight Thursday? Uh, my dough's on the champion. I don't know. That's Shock Powers is a rugged boy. No? My 50 to your 25 on the champ. That's a bet. I'll tell you what. I'll show you. Make that an even dollar to your half. <laughs> Penny for your thoughts, Mr. Harvey. You're shopping for a penny's worth of powerful poison, kid. What I'm thinking would kill a regiment. Boy, you've sure been going around lately with a chip on your shoulder. Uh, you've been going around with a chip between your shoulders. Miss Armstrong's sure been going around with a chap on her hands. I see you've been practicing making funny remarks in front of the mirror again. Just commenting on life and love. No. Uh, here, comment on this piece of copy I just wrote and don't know what to do with. Hmm. Shock Power is merely middling middleweight challenger, now supposed to be training for his bout at the arena tomorrow, is training on soft music and subdued lights when it's hard fists and calcium lights he ought to be concerned with right now. Yeah. Bit of chit-chat for the keyhole trade, I thought. Uh-uh. Uh-uh? Uh-uh. What's the matter with it? You're grinding an axe in our paper. Do you expect me to take Shock Power's insults lying down? Well, that's the way you've been taking them, but flat. Yeah? Well, I'm, I'm changing all that. Oh, you invented a way to fall down vertical. All Mr. Powers has to do is get just that much out of line. You're making awful thin lips, Mr. Harvey. Except if Shock gets out of line. Then I make fat lips. On him. <laughs> general idea. He knocked him cold, cold. Oh, I'm rich, I'm rich. Yeah, like a church mouse. But I am rich. I had my money on the champ, and the champ won. I'm rich, I tell you. Oh, oh, I thought you'd bet on shock. No, that's how I come. I'm rich, George. You're <laughs> I'm calling you, George, is to tell you how sorry I'm about everything that happened. But there's a real good explanation on it. Please come down to the office and... George? George? Are you there? George? Operator, we're cut off. Operator? Operator? All right, hang up, sister. Who are you? You watch this dog, dog. Max, take the other dog. I ask you men who you are. What do you want? The phone's dead, sister. We killed it. What's this about? About keeping shock powers out nights, breaking his training. Fighter's got to keep his mind on his work if he wants to keep his pants off the rosin. The champ didn't knock shock powers out in the first round last night. You did. 
That's the silliest thing I ever... Shut up. Now, we're not kidding, sister. We know you had a lot of money on the champ. Rooting for powers, betting on the champ. That's bad manners. You can get your knuckles wrapped with a ruler. But if Shock wants to have dinner with me now and then, that's his business. It's our business. We had a big stake in Shock last night. The wad was on powers to win. You were taking all you could cover on powers to lose. What kind of dame are you playing a pal to lose? He's not my pal. I've got a pal. You let Shock take you to dinner? Well, he can take it off his income tax. Entertaining the press. And I'm glad I made him lose. It'll teach him not to go around punching my favorite reporter. Now, you three sinister characters just crawl back in your whodunit movie roles and stay there. Go on. Scat. Well, go on. Not the silence. A max half the time it won't work. <laughs> Now, wait. It's all over. Just so as you know it. No, no, I mean, Shock's learned his lesson now, and and, and he'll know better next time and, and make even more money for you. Yeah. Hey, come up close, Max. Set a body muffles a shot, will you? Well, look, if, if anything happens to me, people know it was on account of Shock Powers. Yeah, that's right. And, and they'll know it was because he lost. Uh-huh, that's right. Well, do you want that? So it won't happen again, yeah, but Max. You wouldn't shoot a woman. Max would. Well, now, wait. Wait, wait, wait. just a moment. It's a time out. Now, let's... Uh, Susan, we were cut off, and I've been... George, be careful. Wait, what is this? Close the door, Melonhead. Don't start anything, George. The one there called Max has a gun. A, a gun? Uh, you got a license, Mac? Max. Max with an X. Huh. Marks the spot where the body is found. Yeah, hey, you better take Melonhead first, Max. Muzzle in his ribs to muffle a shot. Oh, hey, 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 stop Wait that. Wait for a streetcar to go past, Max. What's this all about, Susan? Shock powers. They say he lost the fight on account of me. Yeah, she says so, too, so we're all agreed on that, okay? Uh, uh, what's it worth to you boys to call this thing off? We ain't trading. Well, this is a newspaper office. The press all over the country won't like this. If they don't you... like anybody clubbing us around. No, if you hurt us, they'll blame Shock. Yeah. Why, he's clean. We're the dirty kids. I believe this is your street car, folks. Oh, now, listen, boys. This gets you nothing. Ready, Max? Susan. Oh, Shaw, come in. Shaw, come in and welcome. What's the idea, Conrad? They took us, didn't they? That's what I hear tell. Well, she made you lose and bet against you, didn't she? I didn't realize it until last night. I've been having my eyes open. There she is, Shark. Why'd you do it, Susan? Uh, anyone who takes a punch at... A defenseless reporter has has to deal with me. But you made me lose and you bet against me. That's two things you did. Well, you took two punches at poor George here. You really like funny face here, don't you? Let's have the gun, Max. Don't you dare hurt George with that gun. Hey, look, maybe just a little friendly pistol whipping, huh, Shark? The gun, Max. Thanks, Max. Fall down, Max. <laughs> Hey, Shark, whose side are you on anyway? Come on, Georgie, let's clean house. Yeah. Boy, did we stiffen him, eh, Shark? A nice little workout, Georgie. Yeah. Look at this, Hawkins. Just look at it. And no tornado insurance. All the cops had to do was roll them into the paddy wagon. <laughs> you came in just in time, Chuck, old boy. Yeah. The early bird catches the worm, they always say. Yeah. Lucky I retired early last night. Yeah. First round. Huh? <laughs> you don't have to explain it, Jughead. Jug. Hey, now, wait a minute. Well, for you, Miss Armstrong, just because I helped you butcher those goons, don't get the idea I like being played for a sucker. Well, I don't like strangers punching my reporters. Incidentally, I don't like it either. I only beat up on Conrad's mouth because I don't like being a good business proposition of mugs like that. So don't get any ideas. I'm nobody's good thing, see? Nobody's. Are you referring to Miss Armstrong? Collapse, chowder brain. That does it. But no, George. That does it. I've been waiting for this. George, he's dynamite. A good big man is better than a good little man any day. George! He jabs with his chin faster and harder than he did before. He must have been training. Oh, George. He must be in shape. George, are you hurt? Say something, George. Speak to me. Stock in the paper. Not an equal voice in the business. Stock in the paper. Equal voice in the business. Our 
stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back in a moment. How does this sound to you? Terrible. Let's hear it. The stunning first round KO of Shock Powers in Thursday's title go at the arena won't be held too much against the Shocker. He made the mistake of thinking he could burn the candle at both ends and still last the fight. It won't happen again, Shock. We're with you to a man. George, what's that saying about burning the candle at both ends, huh? Well, that? Well, just a manner of speaking. Oh, a manner of speaking. Yeah, a figure of speech. Signifies let's live. Oh. Susan, uh, how about dinner tonight? By candlelight, huh? Convinced me. Well, I know a place where they have U-shaped candles for burning at both ends. What do you say? I'm convinced. Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Harry Von Zell inviting you to join us then.